Hey. Welcome to the Vitamins Gaming Group and the Dark Glass Gaming. Uh, we are uh, on our fourth game of the session, third chapter. It's January 24th, 2020, a Friday. Sir Playa and Norte Playa are in full rumble. People are spending their hard-earned cash on cheap drinks at, at the bars. The shack is at capacity. An 80s cover band is playing on the main floor, and the patrons are loving it. Meanwhile, um, gathered through the current, the local uh, newspaper, that the prince has expressed his displeasure uh, to the kindred of the city that the three members of his uh, of the Camarilla were killed. However, um, they were listed as being in bad due to bad behavior by Macamillion. However, he uh, also kind of covered that uh, the temple is not a place to be trusted at this point, being in, in our control. Um, he established that the killings happened outside of the Camarilla jurisdiction, meaning that any retribution would be ill-advised. Uh, and the Primogen Castle agreed, even though the prince did push for, for, uh, for some sort of uh, retribution. Let's see. Everybody go ahead and give me your uh, rouse rolls, rouse checks. What were you shooting for on that? Rouse checks, you just roll one blood dice, and if it's a one, you get hungry. Sorry, if it's a failure, it gets hungry. Six plus, you keep your uh, same. Okay, level. well, I got a ten. Okay, you're good. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Impossible almost everybody's tonight. hungry. Let's say a little bit more hungry tonight. So uh, let's go into this. So Waylon, your beast speaks out. Man, I could really go for a chipmunk or a squirrel right now. Come on, boss. Let's get us a live one this time. None of that stinky cow's blood that you gave us last time. We're hungry, boss. I'm okay. Going to the outskirts of town and <laughs> All right, you can find a squirrel, a dog, you can find anything in a local park. We'll we'll get back to that. I want something that. a little bit bigger. Yep. Um So uh We'll come back to you, Michelle. All right, and then we're going to go to Brody's okay. Oh, you hear your favorite voice uh, there, Josiah. Uh, you asshole, why don't you keep yourself fed? You know you're just going to make it easy for me to take you out when it comes time for it. You're such a such a waste of space, man. Let me tell you. Uh, what a sandy vagina. Just... Fuck this guy. Uh, so I'm just going to shoot a text over to... Hold on. What's his face? Sorry, my, what was the question? Uh, my dealer. Oh, you're calling your dealer? Bill? Uh, yeah, I'm just sending him a text. Be like, hey, use the bag. Yeah, I'm a little hungry, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. We'll come back to that. However, more importantly, and Charlie, don't hate me now, because I did it to someone else last game. <laughs> Give me a humanity roll um, at this point. Me or Charlie? Uh, Michelle. So oh, Michelle. Okay. Charlie. Hold on. Charlie! 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 <laughs> I have to include my blood dice in that, right? Yes. Oh. Oh, yay. Um. <laughs> one. Two. It's a six, right? Standard six. Yeah, six plus. Yeah. 
Um, four successes, two tens. One of them is the uh, the blood dice. All right. So can I ask a quick question? Just because I don't understand, what's the purpose of the blood dice? That's your hunger. Is it like an extra special one, or it just it's separate because it's your hunger level. So if you roll certain ways, then it actually does certain things. Like in this case, I rolled a crit, but since one of the crit tens was a blood dice, it's a bestial crit. So I succeed, but I succeed with the beast succeeding. Ooh. Oh. It's in a bad way. <laughs> or, <laughs> ah, yeah, gotcha. Or if okay. you were, well, it's still good. At, at the end of the day, I still succeed, but it, it's just going to be the uh, beast more beast kind of taking you over. You can yeah. just fail at okay. my discretion, by the way. What? Gotcha. You can just fail <laughs> at my discretion. I should probably. Well, well it's always the, the DM's discretion, yes. whether you fail or not. But, the other, the, the the other side of that is if you if you roll a uh, no successes, but you roll ones, um, that's a that's a fail. But if it's ones with your blood dice, then it's like a super fail. Uh. Yeah, it's the whole the beast emerges. So bringing this the beast to, takes over. Bring yeah. this to bear, um, Michelle. You awake. There's small streaks of sunlight going through um, somewhere where you can generally identify your door is normally at. Um, amongst your apartment, which is virtually, or your condo, which is virtually a library in itself. And um, you feel something in your arm. You, uh, your eyes open, sandy as they are. It's, it's very difficult for you to be awake at this time. But uh, you manage to uh, come awake uh, just due to the general danger. You hear your alarm system going off in the background. Um, and uh, you see a woman. She's small, fr small and... Kind of frail looking, but she's blonde, uh, and she's expertly wielding a um, lobotomy tube, which she's got a bag full of your vitae for some reason, and she's got a little hand pump that she's squeezing, and she kind of just noticed that notices that you've come to, and she grabs the bag and she starts running. I scorpions touch. Okay. I, I spit at her. You gonna bite your tongue? You wanna spit at her? Yep. Okay. Go ahead and give me the um oh, let's see, is it wrong? It's strength, it's my strength um, plus blood sorcery versus her stamina. Plus a cult or fortitude. All right. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> All right. Okay, hold on, hold on. Not sure how to actually roll this. Okay, I'm just going to roll it. <laughs> Sorry. You're I fine. can't get it to roll one thing. Um, one, two, three. What is my difficulty? Keep in mind, if you'd like to roll a, if you'd like to use a point of willpower to re-roll anything, if you think it's that important. Oh, shit. You certainly can. I didn't realize that I was supposed to be using a. Oh, that's not bad. To okay. Rolls. <laughs> awesome. So I, I do roll enough. To my dominate presence and all. Okay, so one, two. <laughs> four, 
Depends on which one okay, so have. yeah. I have to uh, swear uh, one, two, three. I actually on four dice I roll I roll six successes because they're all successes and I got two tens. None of the blood dice this time. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yes. You strike her. And uh she takes quite a bit of damage here. If she's not kind, then she goes unconscious immediately. She is not kindred. Kind of kind or human. Oh yeah, she's not if she's not kin mm -hmm. if she is kind. Yes. Yeah. Yep. She um she takes a pretty severe hit. You can tell that she is not um, not doing so well as kind of her skin boils or her uh, shirt kind of uh, peels away in places. And she rushes down around the corner of one of your um, one of the she uh, one of the bookcases, and uh, you hear her steps going down the st stairs. And she's going, please, please. I didn't. I, I only need this for science. I I take after her, obviously. <laughs> and you get down and ish. Go ahead and roll a wits plus investigation for me. Or wits and awareness, whichever's better. Whichever's better. Um, wits. Plus, oh, they're the same. Uh, two successes. You um, you gather that if you saw her again, you could figure out who she was. As she, as you kind of come around the corner and see that she's run down the stairs, and the doorway is wide open, and the sunlight is still peering through the um, open doorway as she. Rushes forward into the daylight and closes the uh, the slam shut the door behind her. Um. Can did in did my attack leave any of her blood behind? Uh, it's acidic. It ate it. It pretty much just. Well, I just didn't blood. know if. Yeah, if it's not, acidic, so what if it made an open wound and she would have been bleeding? Um, you get the feeling um, that there's a reason that she wasn't bleeding. I'll put it like that. I know, but if I could get some blood, I can yes. do. I can do some things. more. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> Um, and we begin in the evening. So, as we covered, Shack's at capacity. 80s cover bands play on the main floor. Um, you see some guy in hammer pants. Do do I need to take another? No, we'll count that as your point. Okay, okay. Some guy in hammer pants is sitting there at MC in the microphone, just jamming it out. Um, We've got to uh, the events. Let's go ahead and cover it real quick in case uh, not everybody got a chance to look at it. We had some issues in Tennessee there with the uh, sad events. So let's go to the current. Okay, so it's been decoded. Uh, I didn't take time to encode it properly. So we covered the code, the warning the prince posted. Uh, there's a lot of parties going on in the party districts, of course, in town. Um, does anybody have any streetwise? Um, I don't yes. think I do. I have, yes, I, have I do. One. Okay. I have one. Um, I'm, an, I'm an academic, not a street person. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Josiah, did you have any streetwise? I guess it's 
not too important. Um, there are a lot of parties going on in the uh, in the party districts of town. You guys recognize that the local anarchs are throwing a gathering in Alpine Park tonight. Um, and there's also now a reward for bringing Bruno in alive. The Gangrel who has been blood hunted but is under the protection of the Primogen. Um, the prince is now offering a boon in addition to... Uh, you can either take him or you can get, gather the boon from him. Um, yes, I have one more thing. So what's everybody kind of doing right now? What are you... Um, I'm reviewing my security systems camera footage. Okay. I'm patrolling the domain. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a, as you're patrolling the, the domain, give me a wits and investigation, or wits and awareness, whichever is better for you. I'll take either. goodness um you also pray out of feed pretty quick did you only wait, have wait, two wait. dice for that you didn't have any uh of either hold on no, no no hold on because of the domain because it's our domain he actually gets extra dice for that yeah the um yeah hold on i'm looking it up because we have two and lean so i think you get two extra dice because of our lean i would i would say that this is you know, he's not actively searching for it so but either way success either way it didn't much matter he succeeded and that's all i was looking for okay uh, as you go by the police substation you uh you notice that there's a big one of those big armored vehicles out front. It's, no, it's not there very often. I mean, this is more a party substation than anything else. It's on the outskirts of Sur Playa. Um, there's not a whole bunch going on in the city that sites need for any sort of riot gear or riot equipment or one of these big diesel military grade armored vehicles. Um, just kind of passes as you pass by. Don't you kind of pass it off a little bit, but it strikes you as strange that it's there. Um, Do I notice any personnel wearing any of the gear no, around it's, it? It's just in their auto lot. It's just in the um, the motorcade. It's in the uh, okay. lockdown right now. It's just where they park the vehicles, the garage. Um, moving on down the list. And, um, going down the list, uh, Brody, what are you doing? Uh, Seeing as how my club is packed and all, I am mainly making sure nothing is going wrong in there and Everything's fluidic. Mm -hmm. Things are going fine in the club. Uh, people are having a great time. The MC's killing it up there. He's just like, you haven't heard this guy before, but man, he is drawing the numbers in. He's doing some good stuff for you right now. Always. MC Hammerpants on stage. <laughs> okay. Um, Michelle, uh, in the previous nights, you had established that um, you were also um, helping with the Chantry a little bit, the new Chantry. Yes. 
And um, you know that there's a new member that joined just recently, Dottie. Uh, she's an elderly looking kindred. Um, a little bit southern in her ways, and uh, she seems also awful friendly. Uh, she happened to uh, have absconded the original Shantri with a tome. Um, with a tome, and uh, Dottie seems to claim that because of the knowledge within, she can look her usual way, which is very grandmotherly, warm. And she actually appears very human. Um, so Wayland's doing his thing. And Josiah. You're next on my target list. You receive yes. a phone call. Ooh. It's Samantha. Ah. Hello. Josiah. Yeah. There's a strange guy here who said he knew you, and uh, I didn't have much choice but to let him in, but he's in here now, and he wants to speak with you. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, let me talk to him. No, he wants you here. He doesn't want to speak over the phone. What's, What's his name? name? He didn't tell me. I'm afraid to ask. Okay, I will be there as soon as I can. Okay. And before I leave, I take it I'm at the club? You are at, uh, well, yeah, you are potentially at the club, yes. Okay. Um... If he, if it is who I think it is, um, I'm going to go and talk with Michelle and, um, uh, Michelle. Yes. If I don't come back, release that footage I sent you, or I, I had you hide for me or um, okay. save for me. Like. Like, release it where? Everywhere. Um, okay. Okay. I will release the Kraken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go over there. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll just take my motorcycle over there. Uh, so do you ask any of your coterie if they want to join, or do you just kind of go by yourself? I'm, if it's who I think it is, I'm going to say I could ask them to come with me, but I think the better option is to just let them hang out. Um, okay. Or I'll just say, hey, I'm going over. I'm going over to Samantha's house. I believe Felipe is there. And if so, um, I may need some backup. So if somebody wants to just kind of hang out around the area so that they can get there quickly, but not if I need them. But I doubt I will. I have the feeling this is just him being an asshole. So I'll head that way. Okay. Does anybody take him up on that? Uh, I'll assume you guys all kind of mingle up to the club tonight. Just to start out with. Um, I'm, I'm staying on high alert, but I'm not. Sure. Uh, Waylon, are I'm you? I was out. If you're out and about. I'm um, out and about checking the domain, so. As, as you kind of come back to, uh, you know, the club, which is kind of the HQ of your, um, your domain, Yes, yeah. you do see Josiah uh, leaving, and getting on his bike. Uh, how would you How would you say you're getting on your bike? Are you doing it kind of rapidly, or are you do, doing it just kind of like no big deal? Um, 
I'm probably going to be nonchalant about it, so to speak, so... Because okay. um, I don't want to just make it seem like I'm going somewhere urgently or anything like that, so I'll probably just, you know, drive like I'm going to the store or something, dude. Okay. You know, so, grab something. So nothing that's going to really pique my interest in... Not necessarily. And do would I see him at all if he sees me? You know, you do kind of you kind of catch him in the corner of your eyes. You're uh, put your leg over your bike to get on and yeah. Well, it, it. so so if I see him, I'm probably swing by, just kind of let him know what's going on in a hush sort of tone, and then let him know I'm headed it off. Okay. So what do you tell him? I mean, how do you, how do you make him aware? Um, just, uh, hey, uh, I think um, Felipe is, I don't know if everybody knows this, so I guess I should point it out that Felipe is my sire, and he may, I think he is likely at my girlfriend's house right now trying to fuck with me, so just one to build. Josiah, do you want me to come that way and yeah, stay outside? Yeah, I keep a low presence. I don't even necessarily come too close. I don't want to, like, spook him and make him think that there's, you know, other people here with me, so to speak, but because it could just be that, you know, it's no big deal and or it could be something bad. And and I'll let you know. And what I will do prior to going over there is I will uh, set up a group text and like put in there like problem so that How far I can... is Samantha's from here? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, Samantha, that's lives. a good question. She lives just north of Little Padre in a uh, light gray building. Um, she's doing all right, but, uh, you know, uh, her, her, her house is doing all right. Probably about the same level where you guys are at, about two stars. Um, it's a distance from where we're at now, though. Yep. Just a little bit of distance. It's probably about a 15-minute drive. Okay. okay. Well, that's not terrible. So that's pretty much what, what, what I'll do. So I'll just have it set up that if I run into any type of issues, I won't send it, but I'll just, you know, kind of keep my phone handy so I can just go, and, you know, maybe push it in my pocket or whatever and, and have it sent out. So Waylon, just to be uh, clear for you, are you going to be close? Are you going to be like within a block or two of the apartment? Or are you going to wait for the text to drive over there? Um, you do. You guys I do would, have full knowledge. I would much to. rather, much what? rather be within a block or so. Okay. So kind of get on a uh, vehicle and, or get on. If he's got enough room on the bike, just I'll ride yeah. on the back, drop you off a block from them. You cuddle up to his butt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn backwards. Thank you. Hey, if it pokes you, it's not his fault. <laughs> oh jeez. So yeah, um so we'll go ahead and head that way. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the club, um you see a familiar now familiar face, somebody you've seen a couple times um, prior. Do I have him on here? I don't have him on here yet, so I need to do that. An individual wearing a tweed sh suit. He's a uh, this time he's not taking the uh, soldier seats. Oh. 
not to say that he wouldn't do such a thing, but he definitely uh, has opted this time to be on better behavior. I'll go ahead and uh, invite him up to the VIP lounge. Be right back. Okay. And the, uh, f the face of Bobcat jo Jones is uh, familiar to you as uh, the Coterie members are in the club. Um, as he presents himself to you all, you all upstairs, he kind of comes up, he uh, gets the message, walks upstairs and says, uh, says, hi. Good evening. And I will share that record here once it loads. So, the individual that um, looks pretty uh, pretty wild overall he comes up and goes, "Well, so guys, how you doing?" I'm doing pretty good. Lots of pumping and lots of people. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. a lot of people here today. Oh, oh. so well. I was just going to tell you that um, Max sent me over here. He suspects he suspects something going on in the uh, in, in the region. Uh, apparently, um, the activities that happened at the temple set some set some shit on fire, and the prince, although he can't do anything about it, his primogen have kind of bound his hands. He uh, certainly isn't very happy about. Um, about the events going on, and he pretty much told uh, uh he pretty much uh, left the uh, meeting fuming. And uh, so, I figured, uh, figured I'd give you guys a tip off here, because um, being that the temple's just a couple blocks outside your domain, shit could be happening here. Back in my soldiering days, I was suspected the blues of some treachery. Yeah. If that happens here, we'll take care of it. That's for sure. Hey, no, at least it's, I'll just recommend keep a keep a lookout. Make sure that everybody's uh you see something, you know, Max would love to know. Yeah. Well do. He looks over at uh, the girl he had uh, accosted the other night and she looks over at him kinda of like Wondering if uh, you know, because uh, the kiss is quite pleasurable. Um, so he does. Uh, he does um, definitely. Give her once over. And says, "You mind if I?" That's what she's here for. <laughs> he goes, "Well, sweetheart, why don't you come on over here?" And he sits down in one of the booths that um, that somehow doesn't have anybody at it and he pats his leg giving those ample room on the cushions and she comes over and she looks over at you kind of nervously and then looks back at him and sits on his lap and yeah he, uh, he starts whispering something in her ear she giggles so it's quite obviously it's quite naughty of what he said and <laughs> he kind of you hear her make some uh, noises that are quite uh, inappropriate around small children as he feeds. Of course, he does so uh, in such a way that it's not obvious to everybody around that, that happens. Um, Jack sends, shoots you guys a text saying, hey, check out some investment opportunities. Um, so I'll be I'll be back with you guys eventually. I don't know how long this is gonna take. Alright. He's just the gambler, right? Yep, Jack is the gambler. So we'll go back up to uh, Little Padre. Um, we'll go up to uh, Samantha's apartment. You approach a building, it's gray. 
You know that Samantha lives in uh, building four, number three, apartment number three. This is 403. She has a uh, rather nice door. Um, and Josiah, through the, uh, through the door, you can hear the sounds of Incubus playing. Uh, you know Samantha well, and this is the kind of music when she, she listens to when things aren't always going just great. It's, uh, you know, a nervous song for her. I, uh, she's got a little bit of stress going on. <laughs> Which album? Uh, Ride. Uh, what's, what's it on? Ah, um, gotcha. Okay, yeah. morning. Uh, yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. Okay. So, um, I'm going to assume that... Do I have keys to our house? Um, we'll say that you mean a lot to each other, but um, you have keys for emergency if you need them. Yes. You know where she uh, keeps her spare key. Ah, uh, well, so I'm going to act as if this is normal and not try to bust in. Gonna try to keep it cool, so I'll just knock on the door. Okay. Samantha comes to the door. Um, she's a beautiful brunette, and of course, being your, your station of uh, your level of beauty, uh, yes. she she's probably like a solid eight on the list. All right. All right. And and she's um she looks kind of a uh, Disturbed, but she gives you a smile that you know is reass she's reassured that you're there, but she's not too sure about what's going on. Um, but you can tell that nothing obvious has happened to her, she's not been injured in any way. Okay, and she goes, He's he's in the um, uh, he's in the living room. All right, so I'll uh, go ahead and head in. Okay. On uh, entering her apartment, it's a small, well-furnished apartment. It's got um, a little comfort things in there. It's stylishly done. Um, she's kind of got kind of some new age stuff going on in there, you know. Um, new age moisturizers and all that stuff in nice bottles she makes a she makes a living selling that on the side kind of a side hustle okay and um and so it smells delicious in there <laughs> and you see on over in a corner there's this guy um he's got slicked black hair uh that's been slicked back he's got dark skin um kind of think he looks somewhat familiar. He's not who you expected by any means. Okay. Um, he's definitely not Felipe. He's wearing okay. a fine red button-up shirt. Um, and some, uh, some nice trousers, you know, uh, really nice pressed trousers. Well-dressed for who he is. You can kind of see in one corner the uh, telling bulge of a gun. Okay. Um, and on, his, on the other side, you see another bulge that's not familiar to you, not in these modern days. Um, and it obviously isn't the, uh, the full cock-a-doodle-doo. <laughs> okay. And he goes, oh, you're Josiah. I saw you the other day at the temple. Yes. And I am sorry, I do not know your name. And he gets up off the plush leather chair that he was sitting in, and he extends his hand. I'm Rafiq. Ah, hello, Rafiq. Can you join me out on the... Uh, is she, like, in her first floor apartment, second floor? He said, uh, she's on... Or is she in the house? She's on a first floor apartment. Okay. It's building four, number three. Um, the way the apartments are set, odds are downstairs and evens are upstairs. Okay. He goes, so, um, 
Come join me on the porch. So I'm assuming there's like maybe a chair and a little couple chairs, a little table. I would love to. However, there are prying eyes in this city, and I do not trust them. All right. And he says, "What we have to say is quite simply done. We can do it here. Uh, we may wish uh, Samantha to perhaps go get us some um, hors d'oeuvres or something." And Samantha looks. She knows you don't eat. <laughs> um, and uh, and, and she there. looks quite thankful to be doing anything but being in that room. So she. <laughs> um, uh, Samantha, why don't you go ahead and uh, head out and grab yourself something to eat real quick. We shouldn't be too long here. And uh, I'll shoot you a text when everything's over, all right? And she smiles, and she makes a beeline for the other room, so she's away from anything she might overhear. Oh, I was going to see if she wanted to, like, leave, leave. Yeah, she will, uh, she'll go ahead and go down to the corner store for a minute. Okay. Waylon, you see this uh, beautiful brunette girl walking out of the, um, walking out of the apartment that uh, Josiah walked into. Uh, Has she met any of these? Anybody else? I would assume, I mean, it's up to you, I would assume that you keep your private life private. Yeah, I would think especially so. Especially given your special talents. Yeah. So, uh, since it's not him, I'll go ahead and uh, pull out my phone and I'll just shoot a text over. Uh, and just say, hey, um, my girlfriend just left. If you want to keep an eye on her, that don't make yourself known, but just kind of keep an eye on her, make sure nobody messes with her or anything. It's not who I thought it was. Wayland, do you know And just leave it at that. Wayland, do you follow I'll text him back, and I tell him I'll, I'll keep an eye on her, protect her for him. Yep. You um, you do a great job of it. I mean, she's not trying to hide. She's just kind of like taking a walk briskly, kind of like almost as, almost as one who's been a little bit stressed and she needs to uh, work off some of that stress by moving quickly. <laughs> um, Rafik, uh, says, oh, my friend. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there. I don't know what you think you're doing yet, but never involve Samantha in anything. There are far easier ways to get in touch with me than involving her. I do apologize about the methods. However, it was of the utmost certain uh, certain importance that we keep this on the down low. And getting a hold of you through other means, I didn't necessarily want to um, alert any uh, undesirables of what we're doing, or that we've even talked. Okay. And he... I'm just saying, there, there may be other ways that might be better than involving her. She does not get into this life. He goes, oh, I understand. I have family as well. I would be upset as well. He uh, says, I am Rafiq, a member of the Banu Hakim. Nice, nice to meet you, Rafiq. And he nods and he says, this is, yesterday was not the first time I've seen you. The first time I've seen you, or I saw you, was when Felipe took you mm. okay well as I'm sure you're aware at this moment I am no fan of him oh I am well aware which is why I'm speaking to you now okay 
while you're not of the blood, I would give you an offer that we can teach you any bites his wrist and drops a little bit of blood on a, um, on a plate and you see it just kind of start to boil. Uh, and you're not too worried about the plate. It was something that she had actually given him to put his tea on, even though he didn't drink okay. the tea. Um, but you see that the uh, actual ceramic starts to bubble and kind of warp as if something super acidic hit it. And he, he looks at you and he says, I'd be willing to teach you the ways of our kind, if you would like, uh, in in your quest, because he stole you from us, and uh, we are not pleased. Well, well I, I might have, have some, some information, information that you, you might, might enjoy, enjoy as well. well. Indeed. Now, now one, one of the things, things is there... Is there... Oh, well, no, 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 never mind. mind. I, I wanted, wanted to kind of see if I felt, felt like he was uh, on, on the up, up and up. up. He but. seems pleasant um, to the utmost level. Uh, he's definitely not trying to anger you. Uh, there's a wary uh, awareness of your predatory skills. And you can certainly tell by his stature that he is also of a similar predatory nature. Okay. And, and so, so... But before I give you this information, I need to uh, get some sort of evidence to prove that you would be trustworthy with this information that I could give you. And he smiles and he says, Oh, I understand if you don't wish to take on faith. And to be honest with you, he is not my prey. I would never steal him from you. Oh, I'm not, not necessarily needing someone to quote unquote steal him from me. I'm more concerned about uh, the possibility of getting thrown under the proverbial bus. And the information I have would uh, could make that happen very quickly if uh, placed in the wrong hands. He smiles and he says, I will stop you there. I am... I appreciate secrecy. But know that my employers are of the Camarilla. And we are, we have thrown our lot in with them. I would rather you not share any information about the query should, should it come to the point that <laughs> I'm required to disclose any information I know. Ah, uh, I understand. Well, then maybe we can work something out and I can give you the information only when it's absolutely necessary for it to uh, come to light. And he nods. And he says, as for the knowledge that I impart, it's through blood only. So, understand. This offer stands, and he hands you a card, a finely inlaid business card that has Rafik on it. And he says that I am a I'm of the um, mindset that when it comes time to strike, provided that we are prepared and you would be willing to potentially pay back some favors if we assisted, that will help. In the meantime, if you would like, Take off my blood. It will teach you what you need to know. And understand, I do not offer this lightly. The knowledge I teach is limited only to those pretenders, the Tremere, and my clan, which originated the practice. 
Okay. okay. Um, um, out, out of character, character. Um, yes, would sir. this be considered a do, 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 what you were talking about earlier? You would certainly be bloodbound. Okay. Although, depending on his potency and level, um, right. it'd be very... It also depends on how much you think you're going to come into contact with this individual. If you think you're not going to see him again, very often, you're okay. Because you only have to last out 30 days without it. And it, on, only if you have the feeling that he's going to try to cheat you in some manner or another. Um, you know, or ask you to do something that's outside of your your wishes. He does make the pact that if you take in the blood, I only ask him in return that you stop at nothing to uh, until you've stopped, until you've met your goal with Felipe. I have no problems with that. That has been my primary goal for quite a long time. So, I will go ahead and I will put the stipulation if I understand this right, if I take him his blood, mm -hmm. I would technically be blood bound. Yes. But As if I don't see him for 30 blood. days, that falls off. Yep. Okay. So I will make it say, I will take, and I will get that knowledge. However, I will not see you for 30 days. He nods. While says, I'm in the back. Does that work? He nods. He says, if that's your, is that your wish, however, if you should come to the culmination and seek my assistance. If I'll, that's the case, I'll be okay if it comes to that. He nods. But I want it to be my decision. He nods. So it is. You have my word. Okay. And he offers I, his wrist to you. I find that fair, and I partake. And while you don't get it immediately, you may spend, now spend, because you're Kaitif, I want you to give you a special bonus you don't normally get. The okay. low cost of 5 XP, which is the rate for in-clan discipline, you can learn, okay. you can learn the first dot of blood magic. Dometry. Okay. Yeah, blood sorcery. Blood sorcery, there we go. Do, 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 do. All right, we're coming up to. Where first... is? Sorry. Where is that? That's a. It's a. It's a uh, discipline. Discipline. Yes. So, yeah, it'll be in the other tab under disciplines. On uh, uh ah, blood potency, right? No. Yes, no, no, no. under disciplines. Yeah, right under blood potency, there'll be a discipline. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. And that's... Uh, Thaumaturgy. No, it's called blood that. sorcery. Not blood thaumaturgy. sorcery? Yeah. Okay. It's no longer called thaumaturgy. Yeah. It is in the, th in the blood sorcery. It's a nickname. Uh, how do I do this? Sorry, I'm trying to figure different. it out here. For the purpose library, library. It, it's not called thaumaturgy. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to add it in there. Um, Go so disciplines in the library. Um, if you do the oh, uh, that's right, that's the right. little that's edit right. list, then you can do a plus. Or the other way to do it is to open up the library and go to disciplines and drag it in. Yeah, I think that's going to be the best bet. Library, disciplines. Go down, yeah. blood sorcery. Right below. So then you'll need to, then you'll need to go figure out what actual, what first level, um, power you have out of it. Yes. So, 
What is it doing? Hold on. Groups and categories. No, all. Uh, I'm only seeing. It's right below all specs. All right. Yeah, the problem is it's not giving me that. Hold on. I'm, I got arms, oblivion sight, rapid reflexes, shadow cast. Uh, it should be up at the very top. Well, yeah. It's... In the A's. What are you doing? All right, um, moving on, we're about ready to hit a break here. Uh, we have about uh, 10 minutes. I'll, I'll help you find it in the break, if you'd like. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Yeah, it's being quite difficult at the moment. I'm not seeing what I should be seeing, I don't think. All right, so what is everybody else doing? We have Waylon, who's just keeping an eye on uh, the missus. She walks back, you, you, uh, she gets back to the apartment, she's gathered some comfort food, some Doritos, some stuff that you feel a healthy person wouldn't normally eat, but she is, she is uh, definitely not in a healthy place, so. All right, I'll go back to the edge of the apartment complexes and watch the apartment from there. Sure. Uh, those of you in the club, um, Michelle and Brody, uh, what are you... Not, I'm not in the club. Oh, you're not in the club. Okay. Where have you sequestered yourself? I've been at home looking through my, my security system trying to get video yeah. of her. I would say that you've got... You definitely have the clips that you would need. Okay, well, I'm, I'm heading to the Chantry okay. after that. Excellent. Excellent. I'm just downloading a little treat for you. Um, so we're going to back to the Chantry. Brody, what are you doing? Are you just chilling out? Or are you... I have no idea what... It's going on over there, or uh, yeah, you received there, so you received text messages saying everything's going on, so you kind of keep busy on business. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So you show up to the chantry. And uh, meet uh, and Mystique, of course, is there along with the newest member, and of course, you remember Daphne from last time. Yes. Um, she is looking quite annoyed once again as soon as that bell rings that someone walked into the chantry and had the audacity to break her reading. Hi, Daphne. Hello. It's you. Okay, great. And she goes immediately sticks her nose back in the book. <laughs> Which is fine. I just head to. She goes. You'll find you'll sh you'll find that um, Mystique has lo uh, has uh, once again sequestered herself down in the uh, bowels of this room. And Dottie comes out, a rather plush-looking woman. She goes, "Oh, hello, love. You must be Mikey." I have heard her say. Uh, Michelle. Thank you, though. <laughs> oh, but we're all going... I can tell we're going to be fast friends already, Mikey. And she goes in for a big, warm hug. Let's get there first. <laughs> and uh, you find you have very little will against the hug. She just does it. Um, and she feels extremely warm to the touch. And then she lets you go, and she goes... Oh, Mystique will be so happy to see you. She, she, she says she'll be downstairs with Fluffy. Wait, 
Fluffy? Okay. And as you go downstairs uh, to the uh, basement where the sh where the uh, chantry is uh, located, you see a lovely creature named Fluffy. It's a shaggy dog. Oh shit! That has a human arm protruding from its chest, and its uh, arm muscles have been fused into it. And it goes. Who are you? Are you kind, sir? Give me candy. Mystique never gives me candy. Mystique oh, comes you. out and quite suddenly goes, Fluffy, to the corner. Yes, mistress. And proceeds to hustle itself, what, using the arm as his third leg almost, just carrying itself forward and a hobbling kind of step. It starts picking up books and putting them in places amongst the uh, stuff. Because the chantry is mostly complete now, but there are several books that are still out of place. Intriguing. So you were able to get the homunculus ritual to work. And you see her visibly pale. She goes, never again. Never again. <laughs> what I had to do was terrible. Do you realize that some soul is bound to this thing? I had an inkling that's what it's supposed what happens. I've not really studied too far into it, but it was enough for me to not really look too far into it. She says, "If it didn't send the wrong message, I would have given the book back to the uh, back to the house Tremere." No, I think it's probably better that we hold on to that bit of dark magic. And she goes, well, enough of that. I can't let him out. He's too, uh, he's a walking breach of the masquerade. Uh -huh. She <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> frowns. And Fluffy goes, but Fluffy loves you. I'm sure Fluffy does. <laughs> maybe, maybe next time you bring candy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and uh, I am I am slightly my my cold dead heart is slightly warmed at the at the <laughs> thought of the you know the poor eternal prison that that soul has been stuck in. <laughs> it's just a little bit though. No yes. grinching here. Three sizes bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Mystique, we have a problem. What's going on? How can I help you, Mikey? Do we have a? Do you? Have, where's your computer? I got to show you something. And she points over to an old nineteen. 90s version of a uh, Apple. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Consider a belated Christmas gift. I'm going to get you a better computer. I still use it, though, and I pull up I pull up the security video. Um, you can pull up on your smartphone, too. I just figured with the bigger video, with the bigger monitor, it would be easier to see. Sure. So I pull up the video. This putrid thing <laughs> was in my library and was taking blood from me. And whoever it is is a daywalker. And goes. at this point, I will lovely and finish her off if I can find her. Ooh, a daywalker. I've always wanted to know about them. I want to have a conversation with this one. I would gladly uh, peel her apart with you in, in scientific study, but we need to figure out who she is and what she's doing because that's twice now that we've had a break-in in our Coterie's uh, domain and blood drawn. 
whoever they are, they're quite good with needles and blood and, and being able to draw blood. And she nods and she says, oh, well, it might be interesting to chat with them about that because, um, you know, we've lost a lot as far as our knowledge. And they're coming up with new innovative ways of creating new knowledge. So, out, kill her, do the usual stuff, maybe feed her to Fluffy. Fluffy likes candy! Trust me, Fluffy. In this case, you'll like this, too. <laughs> and she, uh, she smiles and she says, well, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely keep an eye out. If she happens to come in here, um, See what what we can do about it. Keep your eyes open. If they come looking for for knowledge or anything else, I know this is the kind of this the store is the kind of store they may get items from for their for their type of rituals. And um, and she nods. She goes, "You'd be surprised." Ace Hardware may be where they find a lot of stuff. And she hits the print button, and you hear back in the background some bubble jet printer going, Definitely going to upgrade the technology. First chance I get. <laughs> Dot Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Can I use. All right, so we've left on a certain situation where, uh, yeah, you use your premonition in the room. We're going to jump now to Brody, who receives a phone call. Okay, let's see. Let me forget the right one. From Buddy Calhoun. You recognize this is your manager of Dusk. Okay. Oh, Buddy C. What calls it? I answer. Yes. Fucking phone. Hey. Yeah, we got a problem over here. What's the problem? So, no, I wouldn't bother you with this, but uh, one of the dancers, well, she took your keys. She's looking a little bit strange today, but she took your keys. Uh, that that were on my keychain that led to your personal chamber. Okay. And she's locked herself in there saying that, um, that they're out to get her. Well, of course they're out to get her. Who's out to get her? <laughs> Well, we tried to ask her, and she said that I could be one of them. She's been a great dancer previously, but I don't know what she's on, but she is crazy right now. Okay. She says, I don't have another set of keys, so I can't get in there to kick her out. Okay. I'll be heading that way. Okay. Much appreciated, boss. Mm -hmm. But buddy, see you out. I gotta see to these people here. It's crazy tonight. Yeah. I'm gonna call uh, Waylon. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. I got a situation at one of my clubs. Uh, may need a little uh, assistance over there. Okay. I'll meet you over there then. All right. I'll text Josiah. Let him know. I got to go over to one of Brody's nightclubs. Yeah, I'll send the address to this one. 
would we have already been done at that point i think at that point i would have just texted him you're good to go yep you guys are pretty like like done. like e like even before he even got the call i would have figured he'd be uh, well, you like, guys... i'd have to give him a because i want to have a conversation when she gets back yeah well i'm sure you calm her down we'll, we'll cut cut that scene yeah just kind of calm her down and get her good but you know the night's young and you guys have vampire things you gotta do yeah so so if you guys would like to approach the club at the same time or approach are you going to go to the cl club first and then head out or are you going to go to dusk immediately and over to dusk okay he said he'd meet me there so okay so if you'd like to go with him, uh, actually, you're kind of his ride, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, I am. So, yeah, okay. so we've done everything that we need to do. So yeah. I go and pick him up, and we head off that way. Okay. Do you let Michelle know, or I didn't know they were together. Uh, <laughs> I don't think oh. Michelle's with us. No, are you, are you going to include Michelle in the uh, text? Just oh yeah, 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 yeah. Just hey, we're good. Like hey, don't worry about family's it. meeting up at the yeah club. Meeting at the dusk club instead. Okay, good because I was about to ask, I was about to send a, a text saying hey, what's going on? Should, do I have to worry about anything? Uh, Apparently not. Good. You're going to the Dust Club? Yep. Um, Where is that one? That oh, I don't think I have it. anything pertinent to my stuff right now, so I think I'll be there too. Yep. Where's the Dust Club at again? Door to Playa. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I'm going to find an... Well... I text back, are you guys needing somewhere to go or do I just need to find a ride to get there? Where are you at? <laughs> um, I'm just, what, it, the, we're, I'm only like what, two and a half blocks from the, from the club down south? Yeah, you're not very far away. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm five minutes out, that's what I say. I'll wait, wait and we can take the limo. Okay. Hey, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Heading to the club. <laughs> yes. Rather not. I'd rather not spend any money on a Uber if I don't have to. You uh, you arrive. You you see the uh, the stretch limo <laughs> is uh, there. The 1980s style stretch limo that's been monstered out, uh, meaning. I'm sure it's uh, up to well, date. But well protected. <laughs> it's been such a trustworthy vehicle that, you know, you kept it. It's a good old Cadillac limo. Um. <clears throat> yes. You arrive to the, um. You arrive to the club. Dusk Club. Let's go ahead and see if we got that one. This is the one with the uh... compromised haven. Yep. We never quite covered what that compromised haven was, but I think it's becoming blatantly obvious what the issue is. <laughs> Somebody else has the damn key. <laughs> and while we're at it, let's go and pull out the image for the. Somebody doesn't know how to hold on to their one key. <laughs> you know what? He's a manager dealing with many important things, with many lovely ladies that wish to um, wish to take advantage of any opportunity they have to escape without paying their bills. <laughs> As you know, at those clubs, they have to pay their own. Yeah, right to work. 
All right, you arrive to uh, dusk. It's a ultra modern club on the entryway. The white walls are offset by large 55 dis inch displays that advertise the various talent they have coming in. A banker's window allows clients to pay the cover and uh, double doors are opened by bouncers who let customers in the club. As you're arriving, you arrive with your stretch limo up to the place uh, and Waylon and Josiah have a somewhat pleasant ride there, you know, no, nothing's st sticking anybody anywhere, you know, it's, it's okay. One may have had a little bit more pleasurable than the other. <laughs> um, but you do arrive safely at the Dusk Club. You see Mr. Brody Chompy get out of the limo. Do you hold the door, f uh, well, your door is held. The, the limo driver gets out, opens the door, and escorts, or enables you both to get out. Yeah. Um... And you see the dusk is quite tasteful on the outside. It has dusk lit in there, uh, written in very nice print, a gentleman's club underneath it. And um, and the gentleman's club is more for the purpose of ensuring that people don't enter the place thinking it's a dance club. Because the entranceway could very well pass for that. Now, as you enter, there's two... Uh, Two rings to the building and a main stage to take center. Dancer, their dancers can strut and take advantage of two dancing poles and suspended wheel. Club, clubs moderately lit with tea cup, uh, real tea light candles, uh, illuminating, illuminating oak tables. Um, of course, a comfortable and roomy chairs for the, the lap dances that everybody has to get. And there's also private dances, champagne rooms. All that lovely stuff. It's very nicely uh, decorated on the interior. Um, and the girls are premium quality. They um, could be on the covers of many Centerfield magazines. Um, you arrive. Do you explain the situation to them? I will explain the situation. Um, I got a Dancer that's freaked out and gone into my private chambers. And about this time, your manager comes over, Bobby C. Hey! Hey, so glad to see you, boss! Yeah? And he's quite... He's actually fairly fit. You probably hired him from the gym at some point or another. He's got some military history to him. He goes... Yeah, we, uh, I didn't even know what happened, but she just moved so quick that she took my keys before I even noticed it and ran into the room. Some customers have freaked her out or something, but, you know, I, I've seen a lot of stuff, but she moved really fast. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll take care of it. What do you guys do as you uh, find the club? Everybody except for our brand newbie. <laughs> you kind of follow suit, or do you? I'll follow yeah. Brody back to the. Yeah. We'll go over to the room and I'll knock on it. What? What do you want? This is Brody. Um, I want to talk. Fuck, fuck. Yeah, well, I don't want to right now. They're all out to get me. Who's out to get you? Everybody! I was... I was just out walking my own way. And she's talking quite loudly. You can actually hear it over the music a little bit. And some fucker came and bit me on the... Does anyone stop her at this point? <laughs> <laughs> okay, honey, honey. I'll, 
I'm coming in. It's just me. I'll unlock. Come in. Poor kid. <laughs> And go ahead and open the door. What's the on the card there? What is the uh, uh manipulation and pres presence with composure and intel. Okay. Wait, hold on. Is that the. That's presence. That's not dominate. It'd be cloud memory, right? Yeah. Okay, so, he... so it's charisma and dominate. Okay. Verse, will, and uh, resolve. Okay. And do I get a plus one for uh, my uh, nipping? Well, I will say this in advance. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, you don't get plus one. Okay. Unless. Don't forget your blood die. That's why I just pulled that one. <laughs> um, if you Ooh. say forget, she'll forget the past five to ten minutes of her. Oh, that's yeah. right. So I'm gonna have to use memorize, mesmerize, aren't I? Or the other one? Yeah, mesmerize. Mesmerize. Command. Nope, you, that's just giving a command. You can't make her forget. Okay. So. Well, in that case, I can't use that one. For this. Yep. So, well, you kind of cut her off, though. Yep. She shuts up. Um, you can tell that she has no intention of opening that door. Mm-hmm. So, who bit you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do... Calm. <laughs> Thank you for following on the devil who is hiding in the background. <laughs> Definitely not the same. <laughs> so, um, she is talking quite loudly, and you can hear her over the deal. Uh, you kind of gather it's probably be best to bring it in a close, closer environment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I move in. Do calm. Yeah, she is freaked out right now, but you come in. Um, and she goes, "What the fuck?" And uh, and she goes, and she gets herself in the corner. And she just like makes it clear that she doesn't want anybody to. She's got her little cat claws out, just like. Ksh. Not actual claws, but you know, like she's getting ready to scratch your face. <laughs> scratch your play face, pull hair. At this point, you see in her paranoid activity, she's got little pointy teeth. Little pointy teeth, pale skin. You know this dancer goes by the name Cinderella when she's up on stage. All right. She, she says, don't come any closer. You can't take my blood either. I'm not going to take your blood. Uh, the rest of you, are you doing anything? Just trying to stay out of the way and figure out if I can help at all. <laughs> I'll stand just outside the door. Right. Yeah, I'll to the door. This seems like um, 
I, I'm assuming she was a daywalker prior to this. She was human prior to this. Yeah. Okay. So this sounds like a similar situation to mine. So I'm just going to kind of sit back and um, let him do the talking cause since they have a relationship. And yes. um, we wait to see if I, you know, hear who might have done this. Okay. Okay. Knowing my uh, past luck with dominates on vamps, no. <laughs> okay. That's uh, fair. <laughs> you, um, at this point, Can't. a corner of the room shimmers. And would you care to describe yourself? Who, me? Oh. Our newest code remember. Mm. Yes. Me? You with the thumbs. Me with the thumbs? Yes. I'm sorry, I missed my introduction. Um. Yes, you're in the, um, you're in the, you're in Brody's personal chambers that are normally reserved for him to sleep in at the club. Okay. Um, I'll give you this. You've probably followed her in to the room uh, after just making sure she didn't create too much of a scene. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, you see an individual uh, looks very businesslike. Uh, seems to be taking charge and saying things like, what happened? Da, da, da. She says, somebody bit me and you're going to bite me too. Okay. <laughs> Evening, gents. Who are you? And out of the shadow steps a misshapen form, or how would you... Yeah, um, the... Kind of the mental image I've got is, do you, do you guys know kind of the stereotypical paparazzi, the balding balding from here up with the long hair behind, um, oh, yeah. uh -huh. the stained trench coat, the just horrible buttoned up shirt before it that you can tell has been slept in for weeks mm -hmm. um, because he doesn't leave his car. Yeah, he's just, waiting for Mariah Carey's residence for her to come out. Yeah, asking. just greasy and gross. That that was what he was before he was a Nosferatu. So <laughs> take take that and run with it. <laughs> All right. How did we Maybe. not smell you? <laughs> it's in my uh, best interest to be unnoticeable. Yeah, I get that. And at this point, she straight up freaks out like, what the, f where the fuck did you come from? Calm down, honey. And she, she now has her claws out two different ways. She has one at you <laughs> and one pointed pointedly at the now creepy, now creepy creeper out of the corner. What? So Who I'm are you and what are you doing in my chambers? Uh, who I am is not very important right now. Uh, what I'm doing here is pre trying to prevent what I think we all know would be a rather unfortunate scene. Yeah. Did you bite her? Would you believe me if I said no? Maybe. Let's just, let's just say she's not my type. And that's true on a couple levels. Yes. She is obviously still very beautiful. Able to dance in a club, and he is obviously very not. <laughs> I'm Do assuming you know? the rest of us are still outside the room at this point. Um, 
I believe Josiah was the one who had the vantage point to look in because he was just kind of like staying back, saying this sounds similar, and he wanted yeah. to be safe. But yeah, I did not go in the room, so yeah. So far, I'm the only one in there. I was keeping my back to the door, looking outwards. <laughs> Okay, did you see who did bite her? I'm, I'm going to assume, out of character. Yes. Uh, you can assume. Okay, I see, I see my notes. Uh, I, I think I got a, a decent look at who may have done it. I describe Felipe and... Ask if that's the person. I'm normally not in the position to hand out information for free, but seeing as the odds seem to be stacked against me pretty heavily right now, uh, I'm going to give you guys this one. Uh, um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds a lot like the guy that I saw. You also know Brody Chompy by... Reputation in the city. He does have a little bit of uh, reputation. Have fame and presence. And <laughs> fame, presence, basically reputation. Uh, he's, he's, his domain is one of the primary domains in Sir Playa as well. Okay, sweet. So I would have some information on that. Um, okay, well then in that case, I'll amend my, uh, I'll amend my, uh, my statement to be a little more conciliatory and just, you know, yeah, that sounds, that sounds a lot like the guy that I saw. Hmm. About how long ago did this happen? I, I would relay that information to them. Yeah, it actually happened just the other night. And she, she straight up goes, what the fuck are you talking about? It's, it happened last night. She goes, you know the fuck that did this to me? What the fuck? Fuck! Hey, I understand you're upset. The same thing happened to me. The person who did this to you is a worthless piece of garbage. Nobody really likes him. Yeah, he's trying to get some models. He said I was going to be his model for one of the shows. Yeah, he's fancies himself a designer. Nobody in that community likes him very much. So I will take it upon myself to ensure that you don't have to deal with any of that. I'll take care. I'll take care of that. You, we, we have you covered. Oh, and she nods and we get to hunt. She goes, no hunting just quite yet. Hey, uh, you passed. We will have a discussion a back. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, um, did I miss anybody's notes here? All right. Well, she kind of calms down a little bit after everything's said and done. She, um, you, you calm her down with what you say, your, your words of, Hey, we'll make sure the fucker gets what he has coming to him. That sort of stuff. Um, what is everybody else doing? Michelle, you see a girl doing amazing tricks on a pole that you've never seen before. She's just like, spins around like crazy. Super acrobatic. Really amazing. Um... It's too bad she has to do it with her clothes off, though. Yeah, 
I've been an academic who's had to pay pay my way through through college. Never had to do anything like this. However, that one time on the street corner, I don't I don't judge anybody, you know, outright until I know their story. So, you know, she may be trying to become a lawyer or getting into some other business. And fifty bucks is fifty bucks. <laughs> I Girl and power. Sure they make more than that. That's right. This one. <laughs> yeah. Now they're gonna say this is an upper end. They're making a little bit more. Not the lap dances and stuff. Those are usually general price, but the private rooms is where the money's at. Um. Also, I think I believe it's Wayland. You had you had a question from a or you had something on your uh, blue book too. On mine. Just touching bases here. Now that you've you've seen Michelle, which you know is a has certain skills. No, not yours. Waylon. Oh, okay. Uh, nothing showing up. Um. Here, one minute here. Well, seeing as how this dancer seems to be uh, responding fairly well to Josiah, more than me. I'm going to leave her in his charge. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm okay with that for now. Uh, she calms down a bit. You, you do realize that... It's a breach. This is a breach of domain for the prince on there. Mm -hmm. Um... So the options are you can take her to the sheriff, you can warn her to be safe, or you can wholly just say, okay, great, we accept it. Um, we're, we're in the same boat here, basically, right? We've got another, we have another vamp that's been created outside of the... The uh, permission of the prince, right? And you don't know that's outside yeah. of it. Felipe could have just been an asshole that got permission, embraced her, and then released her. Or embraced her and never bothered to check up on her. Like an errant father. Well, yeah, but that's still, that still even then it still would, yep. her Camarilla rules would still put him as the responsible party for said... Exactly. He has a responsibility to her. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're going to take care of that. So um, I, I say to her, give us just a little bit and we will be right back. And so I'll step out and get Everybody else with me, Brody, and and I'm sorry, Matt. What's your character's name? Rianu. Rianu. That's... Rianu. Rianu. Uh, Rianu Keeps. Keeps. Yes, Rianu Keeps. <laughs> and and uh, let's step out for just a second, because I don't want to just do stuff, and I. Uh, Brody, do you think it would be okay if we took her back to the other club and sit her down and give her a space to where she we can kind of talk her through what's going on since she was just dumped, so to speak? You know the rules on the Camarilla on this. I refresh my memory out of character. 
<laughs> Out of character. Basically, the rules are she has to be killed. Well, if she if, was sired without permission. Yes. Yes. Well, if she was, so we don't know whether Felipe had the permission or not. So by bringing her, if by chance he did not, then by uh, by law, uh, her life is forfeit and she would have to be killed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he did, then she wouldn't be killed, but Felipe is responsible for anything that she does. <laughs> Was I approved? You were... The deal is, is we didn't have any of that information, so you didn't know who your clan was or your sire was, or at least you didn't indicate it. And so you came in and were accepted as Kaitif under our, um, under our um, uh, coterie. responsibility. Our coterie took on your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. You make a great pet. Basically, yes. Right yes, now you're you beholden. To, right now you're beholden to us because should you make any stupid mistakes, it's on us to remedy them, which would include killing you if we must. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully it doesn't come to that. <laughs> um. Um. And Rihanna, what are you doing? By the way, are you just kind of hanging with the guys, or? Uh. Yeah, for the moment, I'm just kind of hanging back in the shadows. They've said enough interesting things that they've uh, kind of piqued my interest. So I'm uh, doing my best to just kind of pick up whatever info I can from them without having to do too much extra effort. You, yes. you are a male, right? Correct. Okay. Crap, I'm still fucking the only one in the damn coterie. <laughs> As per your uh, question, uh, it's easier to get into character with a male voice than it yeah. is any other. Yeah, well, until we figure out what's actually going on with her, who her sire is, whether he had permission and all, we can do that. Yeah, that, that was kind of what I was wanting to do because I don't want to have this. I think we need to find that out because if we know that I wasn't then likely she wasn't either and we need to find a way to not kill her or me if we can avoid it um while i think you are relatively safe since we've taken responsibility yes. for you yeah. right. and introduced to the prince, prince and whatnot it, even if it comes later that you were sired by uh, uh, Felipe, he Wouldn't would have he would still be beholden to the rules and the breach of law by creating you. But unless you just really piss the prince off, <laughs> I'm doing my best not to. Generally, do that. you should be reasonably okay <laughs> i have a problem with one person not everybody at this yeah. moment so yeah. so you know i'm her, on the other hand she would not and we've already taken on the responsibility of somebody <laughs> right i am not i am not for taking on any more responsibility yeah I can i'm not really uh for taking on full responsibility just giving her shelter and explaining things to her. She comes in, she goes, responsibly for what? Michelle. What? What do you want? We'll, we'll explain all of this to you in another location. Out. We are here to <coughs> I have you a shift here. and I have to... help you out in this. I have a shift here. I got to pay off my cover here. It's covered. Here. It's covered. I gotta yeah. buy myself some new pair of shoes. And she we got you handled. Don't she worry. She gives a full nothing. diva like full pair of shoes. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! It's another one of these. <laughs> I'm not sharing my shoes. 
while we while, she, while we're here she to looks help at you, you I'm not really a girly girl, I'm but I do have my wardrobe and I'm not giving it up, okay? And, and she <laughs> looks at you, she gives you a brief up and down. She goes, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing that. As she's wearing her Well, you are dead, but you don't have to wear this, so it's okay. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I'm prettier than you, so you better be careful. She goes, you are a pretty boy. Let me see. I'm aware of this. She goes, are you sure you wouldn't want to go get a lap dance? You can do a half hour for 200. I'm good. I'm good. I know where I could get some high-quality lap dances for free. Thank you very much. And she goes, I'm gonna stay here and finish my shift. There's no, there's no reason. I gotta, I gotta earn some money. She goes. Besides, and then she goes. I docked off back there, and she points back to where you have an emergency ration of blood in there, and she's drained it. So you know about that. <laughs> she goes. Oh, I found out. <laughs> Well, maybe we don't need to do as much protecting as we thought. And, um, she does, um, this, how about this? Y'all figure out what you guys are going to do. Figure out what you got to do with me, because I don't give a fuck right now. I'm going to go ahead and get out and make some money. And she starts walking, and she goes, if I can hold up in there for now, I'll be good. I pull, I pull Josiah away from her. You see your key, the manager's key ring, is like on her, on her freaking uh, ring around her pointer finger, clenching the fist. I pull, I pull Jose, Josiah oh, aside. I'm like, okay, I get, I get. She has similar circumstances to you, but I think at this point we just leave it up to the prince. <laughs> yeah. What comes, what, what comes, comes in this case. Mark it in your cold, dead heart as another, as another notch on the reason why you want to get back at your sire. And then, and then we just let it happen. If he's, if, if he allows her to live, he allows her to live. If he doesn't, it's on Felipe. I will step away and, uh... <clears throat> Call my permission. and let him know what's going on. Yeah, and, and, and I completely understand. And so while you know what I have, um, I'm going to be like, okay, um, before you call Brody, let's go. If she's going to go dance, we're going to let her go dance. Let's go back to the other club and have a meeting. I, I, I have some additional information to share with you guys before we start calling people um, to that might help in the endeavors to get this taken care of in an uh, advantageous way for everybody, except for Felipe. Felipe is a good, good man. Who was that? <laughs> was that her? No. Or was that you? That was just a storyteller just saying that Felipe is an <laughs> upstanding individual. I don't understand why you have this vitriol. I will, uh... <laughs> Where did this narration come from? Right. Fuck that guy. It's, it's that I'm voice in your off head. Side for a second. I'm gonna have, um... Josiah describe the guy, uh... We pay to the bouncers and the uh, manager. Don't okay. let that guy in here anymore. Ever. All right. You got on the blacklist. He's 86. Michelle. No, no worry. Bobby C. got it. <laughs> yes. Five times a week. I did what I said earlier. I did just say to Josiah, by the way. Just for in-character purposes. 
Right, right. right. Um, but Waylon, you're trying to speak with Michelle? Yes. I just want to pull Michelle off to the side. Just me and her. Okay. Victoria needs a Tremere to blood test. Violet. Okay. I can do that. I will let her know then. I mean, you know that his other clothes I mean, it'll, cost her, it'll cost her a favor. A very small one. But it will cost her a favor. She's aware. She doesn't trust the upper echelons, I should say. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I will let her know, and I will let her know your conditions. <coughs> okay. I assume you shoot the text? Yes. Okay. She goes, great. Where do we meet up? Where would you like to meet her at, Michelle? We can meet. We're heading back to the south, the south club. So, meet her there. There, that's fine. Oh shit! All right. I shoot her the text. The south club. She uh, says we're we're out hunting. We'll go ahead and drag. We'll go ahead and go there. Okay. I'm not riding on the back of the bike this time. <laughs> are, are you getting the limo? Yes. <laughs> uh, I completely understand. <laughs> okay, so you all head that direction, uh, head to the club. Um, Omni, are you doing so as well? Are you going to tell them or hang out with them a bit? Or what are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to go necessarily with them, but they've definitely given me a, a, a few interesting things to think about, so I, I probably won't be far behind them. Sure. Okay, and um, if you wish to do... Uh, when you're in public, if you wish to do the, uh, I don't know which uh, skills you picked, but I assume you probably picked pick the one you can walk and stay hidden. Uh, yeah, um, Silence of Death, Unseen Passage, and Ghost okay. in the Machine. Excellent. So, if you want to do Unseen Passage, it does take a rouse check, which means you roll a blood dice to use it. Or you can, or on, on Fantasy Grounds, you can just, at the bottom of your character, there's a Rouse button. You just click it. Just once. Yeah, don't double-click it. Well, please double-click it. I'll pick which one I want. Okay, you're good. As long as you pass, you don't, you don't yes. increase your hunger. I don't know what I'm rolling, guys. <laughs> so they replace blood points with Rouse checks, so... What is, what is my rouse based off of? Your blood. Your rouse is just, it's just um, a single die. And if you succeed on a, on a standard six, so six or above, so you succeed on a, on a um, zero, you know, on a, on a five or less, then you fail. Um, and if you fail, then your hunger increases by one. Which oh, means sweet. you'll, you'll nice. put more hunger dice in your pools, um, and the hungrier you get, the harder it is. You know, the, you know, the, the more likely the beast is going to take over and things like that. So, so instead of tracking blood points, really just anytime you do something with your blood, anything supernatural, um, 
your your rouse checks determine if you get hungrier or not, if you use enough blood to get hungrier. Yep, they replace so blood points with it, so it's yeah. better. It's a nice it's a nice little uh, change in the game mechanic that makes it a little easier to to stick to the role playing and, and less worried about how many blood points do I have and can I do this or not. Yep. Um, Perfect. Um, okay, you arrive. Um, Waylon, I know you haven't gotten a chance yet, but do you tell them what you saw on patrol today? Yes, I do. I let them know what I saw just outside of the precinct in our, in our domain. Hmm. Okay. And as you enter the club, it's packed. He's got into some severe hammer time right now is what you're walking into. <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's almost a scene from the 80s. The guy even has a haircut now. It's like he found a wig or something they put on and just bring it down. I don't know the I don't remember the name of the manager there, but hey, make sure he's here it's more often. <laughs> Eddie Zimmerman. So, yeah. that my uh... that's your characters. That's your everything that's important. Um, yes. So, he, he says, noted, sir. I'll try my best. <laughs> um, he's on high demand, understandably. And this time, you hear a voice coming over going, Oh my God, I love this guy! And you see Victoria go on, walks up to you and goes, How the fuck did you get him up on stage? I have Holy problems. crap. What's his name? Worries. Huh? What's the guy's name? Uh, DJ Hammer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you're like halfway tone deaf or you know don't have any beat whatsoever to yourself, you still find yourself kind of bobbing with the music a little bit, and almost in time. Like, you actually have to try not to move with it because he's just bringing something to the party that's just amazing. Um, so you guys go to the VIP or do you guys uh, stay down there? The VIP. Secluded VIP area. And you see... Um, yeah. And you see a very... Much more sure of herself, Violet, behind, uh, dressed up in some club gear. She looks actually decent. Looks like maybe, uh... Miss Violet. The homeless person you found the other day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the, um... Victoria appears to have, uh... given her probably one of her more used leather jackets... That's probably on his last rung. I mean, leather's worn in. This is worn in and plus plus. <laughs> but still somewhat stylish. Um, and just a nice little t-shirt, a Joan Jet t-shirt with some pants and that sort of thing. She's got dressed up pretty nice. She's rocking it. She is. She's kind of pulling the rocker thing. Um, yes.
So, Charlie, are you, or sorry, uh, Michelle, are you doing your thing or? Yes, yeah, I, I go meet. I go meet them. Okay. So, there's a secluded booth. Uh, and Chompy has a nice upstairs. Um, and Rianu, you kind of see that it does look very nice upstairs. Um, of course, uh, you managed to um, give me a wits and stealth. Uh, old rules apply. I get one die per point, right? Yes. Correct. Now, and however much your points? hunger is, uh -huh. however much your hunger is, make sure that you have one die for your hunger. If it's not a separate, if it's not a separate um, color, just roll it separately so that you can tell which one it is. Yes. Okay. Um. Do you want me to type it anywhere or just say it? You, you can just say it. Okay, uh, 10 for my hunger. That's and critical. Are we going just, do you just want six plus six successes? And above. Six and above. Okay, uh, four successes. Any other 10s? Uh, no. Okay. Darn. Six. He's just strong in this one. I know. Six, eight, six, eight, nine, seven. Yeah, since if you got, if you gotten a 10 with that blood dice and another 10, that's a critical, uh, any two tens is a critical, but if you have a one of the tens happens to be the blood dice, then it's a bestial critical, which means it's a critical success. However, the beast does it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and the storyteller did... basically determines what the beast does to make it a success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, no, we're not the beast is very strong in your roll. <laughs> no. No, I did not roll another ten. Yes. Um, botches, by the way, just just for for rules perspective, um, you can't botch. The only way you botch is if you have no successes and a one. If one of the blood dice is a one, then it's a super botch. Yeah, well, Beast no, there's no botch. botches. Yep. No botches unless you roll a hunger dice as a one and no successes, or not enough successes oh, oh, oh. to not enough successes to complete the action. So if it's a difficulty three action. And oh, and I still I roll a one in my hunger and two successes. Yeah, that's so still it's a only the hunger dice uh, that you have to worry about rolling with one. Yes, but it doesn't matter as long as you have enough successes to succeed. Yes, and it's succeed at cost. But we'll go into that, and I'll give you the options when that happens. Um. <clears throat> yes. So, she looks slightly more sure of herself. She gets in the uh, booth with you. Hello. Hey, Violet. And she hands you a bag. Okay, I open the bag. Inside is your clothing. And she goes, thank you for letting me borrow that. That was so nice of you. You are welcome. Thank you very much for returning it. So, I'm, got a, I'm, I'm doing something here, and, and um, I'm going to need to do... Um, a blood test, and it's just going to take a little prick off of your finger. So I take out like a little bobby pin, okay, and just prick just like the little side of her finger, like I'm doing, like they would do for any kind of blood test type thing. Yep. Do it on the do it on the side so it easily closes back up, and then I just swipe my finger and put it on my tongue. Okay, go ahead. Give me your resolve plus blood sorcery. Three successes. All right. And of course, she she does uh, she does commit to the favor, uh, a small favor. With three successes, you're able to tell that she is, of course, very weak. She's thirteenth generation. Um, she. I'm I'm writing all of this down in a notepad in my little yes. notepad for my purse. She's 13th generation. She um, is. You taste a little bit of strength in her blood combined with a little bit of um, presence, you might say. And 
just it just hits you full on the mouth. And then, um, and then lastly, it's quick to go down. And those three options give you that she is of the bloodline of the Bruja. Ha ha. Ah. Bruja. Ha ha. Ha ha. I write, I write all it down. I write all the details down and um, and then rip that piece off um, and hand it to, um, what's, her name, what's her name again? Valerie? Uh, Victoria? Victoria, yeah. Victoria is the uh, scourge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand it, to, hand it to Victoria. Tell Violet that it was nice to see her again but that I need to go and meet with the rest of my quartery. <clears throat> okay. And then as I walk, after I walk away, um, I take out the charcoal that I keep, the little charcoal that I keep, uh, rubbing charcoal that I keep in my purse, mm -hmm. and then charcoal down the paper right underneath <laughs> so that I have a copy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, so... You, you have uh, guarded, of course, the information that she requested. Um, of course, you weren't able to discern a sire because you didn't do a critical or anything like that. But Well, I say that's, that's, really diff that's really difficult. I don't even think the thing says you could figure that out. You potentially can. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, a, it's your discretion at that point. Yep. It's, not, it's not any of the normal pieces that you can get. Um, it, does, it does give you some stuff like... Um, um, if they had diabolized anybody or something like that, but that's not yep. something we were worried about with her. Yep. So, you've gathered that, in, that information. Um, what else? What's everybody else doing at this point? We're Ultra meeting science. The... All you. <laughs> You're the one who called this meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say, Omni, you did hear about, um, as Waylon shared his information, you heard that, definitely. Okay. Is he hiding? Who? Yes. Do I, I get a chance to see if he's hiding? If you use aspects, you might. Well, I... Um, since the unseen gives me a passive, a passive level too. So let's see. I think it did. I thought it said. Ah, it does. That's interesting. I don't know how to play another game. <laughs> I, I love that. That's one reason I took that particular power. <laughs> yeah, what was your role in that? Wits plus aspects? Or resolve? Yes. Which, which one's better? Yeah, it's wits plus aspects um, for the passive. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, two, four. Be four for me. Okay. No. I'll say you okay. don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Awesome. I have no worries, so I was just... <laughs> right. <clears throat> so... Ellie's down here. <laughs> wow, someone's up there being crazy. I get it. All right, so the meeting that's been called, is the meeting adjourned? Right, is everybody there? 
Yeah, I've been waiting yeah. for everybody to get there. It was everybody's here with the exception of Brody, who was there, but we'll fill him in. Okay, so here's what we got so far. I'm 99% sure that Felipe is my sire, and from what I can gather from all of the information I've gotten so far is he did it when he wasn't supposed to, and he actually took me away from the clan that I was supposed to be in, and they are none too happy about that themselves. Um, recently, I came across some footage um, of Felipe draining somebody else and then tossing them off a building. Not turning them. Hmm. We know that he just turned this person and who knows how many other people that he's turned. Um, and I go, so here's the video and I pull up the video and show everybody the video. So have you put it, have you added it to your um to your phone then? You loaded it. Well I on? gave him Are I you? gave him links to some of the places where I uploaded it, so Yeah. We may he, be able he, to get a uh, blood hunt on him. It might not be a bad idea at this point because you know he's you do know that it's just our it well connected. Connected. So getting a blood hunt on him is going to be something that you have to spring. You have to have you you have to have a wealth of data that the prince is not gonna be able to refute. Well, how connected is he to the prince? You know that he's pretty well. I'm giving this mostly to Mike because he is. Um, I've been here a while. <laughs> he, he's he's got the resources, he's got the fame, uh, not the re not the, the connections. The, anyways, yes, reputation within the Camarilla. Um, um, real quick. Yes. Not that they necessarily need to know the answer to this, but um, do I have any information on him that I may have picked up through my slightly more nefarious uh, system of contacts? Um, your information is actually the one that you just saw, although it could be potentially a character witness. If they, oh, I, I was just curious yeah. if I knew any more about Philippe. Um. You know, from your end, the information that a one of your friendly fellows named Skeever, she's a uh, she's also a uh, Nosferatu that tends to live down by the docks. Uh, she was tasked with providing him with this information. So this this video poses no surprise to you. Uh, okay. Okay, perfect. That's what I need to know. Thank you. Yes. And I have a sneaking suspicion that he's one other person who might be um, a victim of his as well. Um, based off of some of the information I got, there is a named Starbright who could possibly be I don't want to play Starbright a vampire. Tonight. Huh? I don't want to play Starbright tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm no, going to mess no. with I you guys. I was bringing Starbright in, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe get some Care Bears in. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, however, so we may want to reach out to him at some point and speak with him. Well, or uh, I will do that on my own. Uh, reaching out to Starbright? Yes. I have no idea who that is, so. You don't. That is a newer vampire in the city, as far as you know. You don't know Star Bright by nature. You're not we'll in the do. fashion scene, so. <laughs> who Star Bright is at all? I mean, do I even know that Star Bright's a vampire? I'm just, I think. I have a suspicion, but I don't know for sure. Right. You have a suspicion you are not at all sure right now. Yeah. Well. So. Maybe if we gather enough of this information together, we can take it maybe to the Scourge or the Sheriff, talk to them, and see if there's enough information here or enough information with what we gather. I think I think to get it a, called. I think as you know I think as you know members of you know the city and domain owners I think it's just our um our duty to inform the prince of these matters. And then um, it's not us calling a blood hunt as much as going, this is going on in the city and this is a potential issue with the masquerade. And then allow the prince to determine the right course. What if I'd go along with that one? Um, I mean, to to request a blood to request a blood hunt on somebody, you're asking quite a bit of the prince, and especially this particular member. You're, you're kind of you're kind of flexing some power muscles there that I don't know that we as a domain yet have. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and the prince so has already my, called one blood hunt. Well, my thought is, and let me know what you all think of this, but I think we should do our best to make this something that could not be brushed under the rug, cannot hit it by anybody so so my thought on this is we throw a party at one of Brody's clubs and your players from the uh, each of the clans Invite the prince, invite Philippe, and do one of those. You know, I think I think if you invite, bro, I think if you invite well, Philippe, you're gonna you're going to potentially. I won't be the one inviting him. That would be a bad idea if I did it personally. No, I just mean in general. I think this is the kind of thing that you just bring to the... The more people you include in this from the beginning without just... You know, it takes away... It takes away from the prince's, you know, ability to control the situation. Which, again, at this point, to me, would feel like a power move that we don't want to deal with. In the politics of the city. So how will we go about getting an audience with Bruno? the prince and 
presenting what we have. I you can get the audience. Have leverage. I'm fairly sure I can, anyway. I say that's our what? first step. Let's get a, let's get a, um, you know. Let's get all the information we can first. Right. Well, that's fine, but, but once we feel like we have everything we, we you know, we can get, then I think we, we get the audience with the prince and we let the prince know what's going on. More as a, hey, in case you're not aware, here is what we know and here's what we think, you know, you know the evidence that we have. And then I leave it to the prince with to the next steps. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I would like to have a high-profile member of the Banu Hakim with us. The what? Banu Hakim. It's a clan. It's a clan. Oh. <clears throat> they used to be called Asmites. Ah. That's fine with me. But I happen to know that they are already aware to a certain extent of kind of what he's been up to. And they're the group that he took me from. Okay. So they, are, all... they are aware and they are... What... Benefit. On it. What benefit would be gained from having them there when we tell the prince? Um, hey, we're going to tell them about what's, what happened. But the question I have is, the um, do I know is... Nick out of character here? Uh -huh. um, with my knowledge in occult um, and, and just the ways of vampires and stuff, would, would I know... If the new Hakim are are Camarilla or if they're um, Anarchs, they're Camarilla. Okay, okay. So I'm just making sure that we aren't we aren't opening a can of worms here that would be problematic um, with them being known as part of it. So I think. Okay, back in character. I think the new the the information about the new Hakim and and you know what happened with you is relevant. I don't know that having anybody there when we relay it is necessary until the prince deems it is necessary. And Nick's that's not private. God damn it. <laughs> um uh, the reason why I want to have them there is uh, my concern is that the prince may just want to sweep it under the rug. And That's... I think in this situation, sweeping it under the rug is going to be very detrimental to the masquerade. Well, that is his prerogative. And I think if he does do that, then that gives us information to then figure out what we're going to do as a coterie. But considering he is the prince of the city... <laughs> it is his choice. It is his choice. We have to give that to him unless we're going to start planning on taking over the city. I, I think we have a little bit of work to do before we get there. I'm okay with hey. that, but... <laughs> <laughs> not sure we're quite ready for it yet. What happens outside of the city stays outside the city. That's what she said. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying about Felipe. 
Mm-hmm. If the prince sweeps it under the rug, we take it outside of the city so it doesn't pertain to the city. Well, I'm not saying that we can't continue to do more about it, depending on what the prince decides to do, but we give the prince the opportunity to, you know, kind of set what he wants to do at the, at the get-go. If he wants to leave it alone and not deal with Felipe, then there's nothing saying we as a coterie can't continue to dig more, figure out more, and come up with our own, you know, our own choices and, and actions. But I think if we don't, if we don't go to the prince first and give the prince the opportunity, then we're playing in a political game there that will bite us, I think, in the long run. Oh, I don't disagree. I'm just saying if the prince does sweep it under the rug, I say in order to keep our noses clean, what happens outside of the city stays outside the city. Trick is ended. No, it ended earlier today. Mm. Yeah, the only thing that I would be concerned about is what backlash might happen if we do something outside of the city to him and the prince finds out and is not happy about it. I, think, I think we're way too far into this to worry about it right now. <laughs> I, think, I think I think we're... We're trying to guess too far into the future and determine what the prince wants to do before we've given the prince the opportunity to do it. Right. Yeah. We need to let the prince decide uh, before we do anything. I think once we know what he wants to do, then I think those conversations are relevant. Otherwise, we're just going to play what-if games. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. There's truth behind that. Yeah, we can what-if all day long. Nothing so would happen. The question that I have is, what more do we need to gather before we go to the prince? I mean, I have a pretty solid bunch of information to go on. As having more than one witness would be advantageous. Yeah. More than just what you have. If we need we need because, a couple more victims, I believe. Yeah. To pinpoint. And 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 I do have a witness to at least my turning. I we have the video. Did you share that video by the way? Yeah, he showed it. Yeah, yeah, I showed the, it. The, the first part of it? Because it was a two-part yeah. video. Oh, yeah, I would have showed him everything. Okay. So the first part included him getting turned. And we just have the word of the other girl. Right. And no clue on... Uh, What's her face? Uh, Vicky or Vivian or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my my plan on that is to seek him out over the next couple of days to... Well, somebody here has ruled out Felipe as a potential um, sire. It was done just a minute ago. Repeat that. Somebody has, somebody has ruled out Violet as being a progeny of Oh, uh, that's right. Oh, oh, is that who we're talking about? Yeah. I, I have it on good authority. Violet is not, is not his. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Um. Hmm. So, 
So that's the one that we were talking to earlier, right? Yes. Right. That would mean there's two people siring people uh, against, against the camera. And potentially. Do we know who? Were you able to figure that out at all, or no? No. Okay. It's so, a separate. It's a separate matter, and we'll deal with it separately. So let's focus on let's focus on Felipe in that matter for now. Well, this person, and correct me if I'm wrong, made it. They wanted it to seem like it was Felipe who did it. Is is, is, is that right? Are you talking about with Violet? Yes. I, I don't know that. We're not I sure this moment is true. Okay. This Which is why at this point I see no connect. With the information that I have, without giving out too much of the information, is I see no connections between what's happening with Felipe and this other scenario. Okay. Other than in the coincidence that they're both, you know, happening around the same time frame. Okay. So. Hmm. Okay, but she did describe Felipe as the person who did it to her, correct? The chick in the nightclub. Yeah. Oh. Violet, no. Oh, okay. Let's Sorry. Talk about two I thought. Yeah, we've got two different turns. Okay. I Violet is the one that we found, remember, at the old house, at the abandoned yep. house. And that okay. I took to Victoria. And we gave her, yes, at the temple. We took her to the temple and gave her to Victoria. The yes. other chick that you're talking about, that's the one that we just went up to. Okay, okay. Sorry, I was confused. I understand now. I'm on the same page. Got it. Okay. So, and you're saying there's a possible third. Possible third, yes. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion just because of the dislike this person has for Felipe. And it could just be nothing. It could just be, uh, oh, they worked together once and he was a, he was Felipe. I don't know. But I have this sneaky suspicion that that's not the case. So, at least that's where I'm standing at right now. So I want to figure that out if we can get a third. Um, is that enough or do we need more I don't think it matters at this point I think I think the fact that we have any any knowledge whatsoever of these of these events is what matters okay so I think we take what we've got you know the fact that you have a suspicion I think is something that we can we can add to the pile, right? You know, we right. know of this information. Evidence exists. This is what we know. We have suspicions of somebody else. We don't know the Well, is if it... the prince wants us to track that down, that would be up to the prince. Then we track it down. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm just wondering if that's. Damn it. To go. Nick, can you can you remove Okay, good. Did you remove us from Matt's channel? Yeah, I'm finally out of it. Okay, I'm good. Sorry. I keep seeing I keep seeing <laughs> things stuff pops up and you're like, I don't and want I'm to like, read it. What is that? Oh stop, 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 stop. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Don't look. So can you see this? <laughs> I was never on Matt's channel, so so, okay, I did not see that come through, so I think we're good. Yeah. Just hey, hey, Nick. Yes, I didn't see that come through either. 
<laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that screwed up. <laughs> so, I guess my only question to that is do we want to go in with as much information as we need prior to I think we have I think we have the information we need now. That's my assessment unless anybody else has any additional information that we can easily get. I don't think we should spend any more time trying to track down more information unless it's something like, oh hey, I just need to go look this up or I need to ask this person. Um, that can be easily done between now and when we can get the audience. I feel like we have enough for it to be pertinent for the prince to know. And therefore, we need to just get the audience and go and deliver the information. Yeah, I'm just concerned that it... Well, so I guess my question um, out of character is, how much information do we know about Felipe's standing with the prince right now. We don't, we don't know. Which is why it's important to just tell the prince and not involve anybody else. Because the prince will know. Well, if the prince is in good, you know, if Felipe's in good standing with the prince, he might be less likely to do it. You're right, but that tells us something, right? Yes. If he doesn't want to do anything, then that tells us something. Which then tells us just how high. You know, so again, this is all out. I'm just talking just generally as players. We just need to go and tell the prince. Because part of it is just getting the prince's reaction and the feedback from the prince to what he, what he wants us to do. That will give us more information to build our, you know, our next steps, right? Right, because if the prince doesn't want to do anything about it, then we know Felipe's high in the standings right. with the prince. Or, or there's something there, and so we need to then start tracking down, okay, but, who can we talk to to understand what influence might be there for the prince? So, you know there. without going too much far out of character, in character, well, I'm saying... Well, you know that He's kind of a friend of it, but also that um, he's going for your history. That uh, Felipe is kind of a scuzz bucket. He he will use whatever power he has to take advantage of somebody. And the prince knows this. He may have something on the prince. Okay. Yeah, which is my. Key. You know, that's another one of my concerns. Yeah, but here's the deal. If we think he might have something on the prince, but we have dirt on him, that gives the prince some leverage to try and 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 remedy that situation, then the prince may want us to do something more in that regard. So that's exactly. what I'm saying. At this point, we can what if what's going to happen here to the cows come home? True story. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need In, to just go Information through. is power. So what, what is the course of action that we're planning on doing, folks? As, okay, as a democratic <laughs> country, <laughs> we vote to just go get the audience with the prince, you know, right. eyes have it. Eyes. I'm eyes on the phone it. already uh, okay, asking so for an audience. Bruno, Bruno, while we're arguing, is like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Bruno took over. Hey, if that's the way we want to go, I understand, and I'm more than happy to, to, to go along with that. So... Uh, Bruno? I don't call the friends. So normally you have an open line, at least... You know, if he's busy, he'll get back with you or something like that. I'm kind of actually going through my primogen first to request it. Okay. For that means. Use the chain of command type deal. Okay. So you get hold of Maximilian. Uh, he has no problems answering his phone. So Max, how can I help you? 
Yes, uh, I got some information that I need to speak to Prince about. Um, I'd like to arrange a meeting with him. So the Prince has been off the off the hook for a bit. We can't get a hold of him. It's quite it's quite concerning. Really? Yeah. I, I sent Bobcat with uh, by earlier to find out uh, to kind of warn you guys. I think something's going to happen down in your area. Yeah, we noticed there was a. Uh, armored vehicle over by the police station. That might be worth checking out. Okay. Because to my knowledge, there's no no reason for them to have a armored vehicle anywhere in that region. And I know the police chief. Okay. Uh, any chance I could get you to see what the police chief has to say about that, or... Since you know him? I'm not going to touch it. If the prince has got ties to this, I'd rather find out from somebody else. The police chief knows the prince as well. Okay. Hmm. It says, but nobody's been able, able to get a hold of the prince. So after, after the Primogen Castle... After the council kind of uh, ter told him he can't uh, collect retribution against um, against the temple, there's nothing. Uh, he's not been responsive to me. He's acted with suspicion every time we've met. So I don't know what's going on. All right. Is there anything else I can help you uh, with? We're just trying to get a hold of a prince, but uh, in that case, um, I guess we'll uh, look into that armored vehicle for the time being. He was awesome. I'd appreciate it if you check it in. And he hangs up. Okay. Apparently, to the prince is uh, incognito at the moment. But we need to check out that armored vehicle that you were uh, talking about, uh, Waylon. I thought, didn't think we was in real dire need of a SWAT vehicle in our area. Yeah, we need to figure out why that's here and uh, go from there. So no okay. prince? Yeah, the prince is uh, nowhere to be found at the moment. He's a little upset, from what I understand, for not being able to seek retribution, retribution from uh, the temple incident. Wouldn't want to be on the bad side of him. I guess that's where <laughs> I'm at, isn't it? Well, not necessarily. Oh, well, I'm not against going after him. I mean, obviously, we've got to find him if we're going to be able to tell him any of this information. I don't know how much help I will be. <laughs> hey, you never know. You could be more than you think. <laughs> well, it's kind of yeah. odd that the uh, armored vehicle shows up at night that uh, we can't get a hold of them, so. Yeah. You kind of got the impression it's been a couple nights. Oh. 
Like some of them doing devious stuff, yeah. Yeah. Alright, well I'm game for going and sneaking around trying to figure out the reason for why an armored vehicle at the station in yes. our domain. Um, I am more than willing to go ahead and do that. Um, however, I do need to uh, get with uh, Philip before I do anything. Just real quick. Unless... Does anybody have a blood bag stashed anywhere? I have a hoard that you can use. Yeah, oh. you are you are in his nightclub. <laughs> uh, well, I understand that. Uh, that's not my style. I'm not. Eh, I'm not really okay with that. Excellently played. I, I will feed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. While, while, while I Michelle is always oh. ready. <laughs> well, it's a lot easier with these with these ones because they know. So I'm a consensualist, so it's easier for me to come here. I'm assuming my uh, club has some blood blood bags too, or something like that. Nope, not your style. You actually primarily feed off of. Well, I'm saying to yeah. feed. I'm sorry, I drained all the cow blood already. Others. Sorry. Uh, it's a haven. Perfect okay. thing to get. <clears throat> you, uh, <coughs> you really wouldn't keep it because pretty much your club always has a constant deal of fresh blood. Okay. Um, you get a hold of Phil. Phil's happy to accommodate you with uh, blood. Uh, awesome. So, some blood for like a little bit of cash. Okay. Can I can I go ahead and feed? Go for it. Awesome. I just want one. Yes. So the ever present question is always, do you take that final dot? No. Do you go down to zero? <laughs> <laughs> Come Thou on, it's healthy. <clears throat> okay. I like these dice. They actually are right. decent. Well, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to tag along. <laughs> okay, so the plan is. Um, has anyone seen the ugly guy? <coughs> Which one? The one that was here earlier. Or he wasn't there. Or at, the other, or, at the other place? Yeah. Was he going to come? Was he following us? I don't know, but I kind of got the sense that he might. Um, did anybody get his number? Um, at, uh, the corner of your eye, I don't Michelle. don't think anybody got his number, the but I'd say eye. he's around us somewhere. Uh, Michelle, at uh, the corner of your eye, you do see. <clears throat> kind of looking inconspicuous, half interested. Is your wayward friend? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there he is. Hey, where have you been? <laughs> Michelle's Michelle's talking yeah. to thin air for you guys. Um, has she finally lost it? <laughs> Come on, uh, get over here. <laughs> Begrudgingly, I'll let it fall. <laughs> um, you are in the out VIP of, section. Out of character here. What you don't know, Matt, is I'm actually really good at spotting you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, would, uh, Nosferatu and Malkavians have always been that way. I would half, the, half the time, we're the, uh, the wall that they're talking to, so. <laughs> yes. I would assume you uh, dropped the cloak inside the booth. Yeah, at, out yeah. of sight of any. Yeah. Although who you might, def who might find that weird. To be fair, 
Nosferatu are just fucking ugly. They aren't necessarily a masquerade breach unless they have, like, pustules that are popping and that sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not that bad. Yeah. They're just fucking ugly. Yeah. That's why I have a note. Ugly fucker. <laughs> uh, I, I, hey, I, he's I just fuggly. I'd let it drop where, like, anybody who might find it weird that somebody just stepped yeah. out of a shadow. Correct. Yep. You've been there. You've always been there. Yeah, Nobody should I've know never, different. I've never not been here, guys. Yes. <laughs> you actually know where Brody keeps the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows that. <laughs> Hell, if I had a substance abuse I might actually step out with it. I guess I have to ask this question, now that you've decided to join the party. Do you have anything else you want to add to this? I know that if your beef with this Felipe guy is something you'd like to see through to the end, you're going to need more than just one person's point of view and some questionable video. Well, it's not just mine. Like I said, I have witnesses from other clans, or at least I have a witness from another clan who can back up everything that we've said. I'm good. You're good? Uh, so take that for what it's worth, I guess. At this point, a waitress comes by and starts to ask if you guys would like some refreshments, you know, something to drink. And she sees your partner and she goes, Oh, good God, what? Where'd you come from? I didn't see you get up here. <laughs> He's been here a while. I believe you underestimate his sneakiness, sir. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that and is sneaky. And <laughs> very sneaky. You said in your background that you were a um, paparazzi? Uh, yeah, in my previous life. You, um, you actually see someone up here in the club, up in the top section, that would have been money back in the day. It was a, it's a senator that's got some fame to him. Uh, he's been in a couple movies, that sort of thing. But uh, he is finagling and carousing with some uh, women of the night. I'd, I'd, I'd like, like to think, think that, that I would have already, already gotten, gotten those photos, photos while I was listening in on conversations. Because <laughs> while I've uh, moved beyond that in the scope of information, I'm... Uh, old habits die really, hard? Yeah, exactly. Old, old <laughs> habits never really go away. And you never know when I might need a favor from a senator. Sure. I'm fairly sure my uh, camera's caught it, too. <laughs> yeah, but my cameras can't be bribed to turn off. Mine can. <laughs> exactly. Also, as a club owner, you have to keep your exclusivity and... Yes, I realize this. Yes. But, uh, I keep a nice little file for myself, <laughs> just in case. No, um, hmm. So not really? everything gets erased, huh? I, I, think, I think I would keep it close, close to my chest, chest what I do know. Um, I, I would just, in character, kind of allude to the fact that I don't think the, they're going to get what they want from the prince. If their goal is some sort of action against Felipe, Felipe, Philip. I don't think we'll get any action from it, but we need to at least inform him as a courtesy. Can I can I do a wits plus insight? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> you guys still have it nicely done. Um, <laughs> you you realize that by telling the prince the Nas is probably correct 
Uh, and also the fact that if you do tell the prince, then your Jack would place it as this. You just showed your hand. Okay. In light of the new information, I feel like we need to get more. <coughs> All things were considered, we should probably at least try to find him. Oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not bagging on that idea. I mean, he is the prince. We should probably figure out where the hell he went. Well, well, and if we can find him and say he is in trouble in some fashion and we save him, well... That might know. give us an upper hand. Uh, you exactly. Kind of got you know, bonus points, so to speak. In the uh, conversation that you had with uh, Max... You got the impression that the prince just didn't want to be found. Mm. He's around. He just doesn't want to be found. Yeah, he's, just blowing, he's oh. just blowing people off who are. Yeah. <coughs> oh. <coughs> okay, okay, so I'll relay that. <coughs> okay. Well, then I okay. We don't. So worry. that makes it different. And yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a doo -doo 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 moment here. Get your nose out of that, Paulo. Bobcat Jones did when he first came through. Uh, you you heard this. Say that back in his war days, he would suspect Old Blue of coming up with doing something sneaky. Yeah, I remember that. I just didn't relay that. <laughs> right. Mainly because. Is he talking about the Ventru was uh, old blue? He was. He was definitely talking about the fact that the prince seems to be up to something sketchy okay. at the time. <coughs> yeah. Well, I will relay that at this time, though. <laughs> yeah, Bobcat kind of thinks that the prince is up to something sketchy, so. And just more reason to check out that armored vehicle, then. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I'm more than happy to sit on this information as long as we... I would say, time. sounds like maybe this, this changes completely <coughs> and start building more as a, uh, as our own leverage. Yeah, because maybe the prince is in on it well, and you're no muffled quiet as hell. And, and it, you know, if the prince is, you know, okay with stuff that could break the masquerade, then that's a bigger problem that we want to make sure we're looking into. So I have no problems at all with holding on to this information and building up a larger stockpile of them. <coughs> Okay, so well, if that's the if that's the uh, result of this, then I don't I don't think there's any reason for us to look into anything else. And just as a coterie, we need to start digging into more of Felipe and the rest of it and getting more information for our own purpose. Yeah, we need to Same figure out what the armor vehicles for. Looking at the time in, in character. In character, looking at the time and saying that, um, I've got research to get back to, so if y'all's good, I'm good. <laughs> um, at this point, I have nothing else that I can accomplish this evening either. Um, I do have some stuff I want to do over the next couple of days, but I don't know. Out, out of character. It's probably a good point to stop. Um, so we'll go ahead and stop the game for now. Um, one minute here while in stream. Thank you for watching everybody who's been watching and